I've often talked about one of the best metaphysicians who lived was Dr. E.K. Kumaraswamy, who knew 27 languages, wrote so many books and articles that long after he was dead, nearly what, 60 years after he was dead, they published uh, a new book, first in print. Um, incredibly intelligent, is on the stamp of India. I was friends with the son, Rama P. Kumaraswamy. This is a viewer-requested video on ghosts. I mean, I know some people might, might not be interested. If you could hear a slight dog barking in the background, that's my crazy neighbor. They got a blind dog that's like it's barking out in heavy rain now. Right now, it's probably uh, begging for attention because uh, the neighbors are uh, they don't treat the tor poor dog well. I've uh, actually called about it before, and so has my other neighbor. But uh, the uh, governmental officials they don't care about stuff like that. <laughs> Seemingly so. That's very unfortunate. Um, anyway, a huge mistake that uh, Kumaraswamy made. And I'll read you a thing from him. Nobody's perfect. I mean, I'm a huge fan of uh, Walter Russell, Universal One, and some of his other stuff. But, I mean, Walter Russell never defined a field. There are many things that Walter Russell didn't understand. But, you know, he could still have high praise for somebody. He praised them for what they got right, but I'm not going to praise anybody's mistakes. Anyway, this video is about ghosts, but I'd like to read an incorrect passage from Kumaraswamy where uh, he doesn't understand because uh, in the Pali the word is Antara Bhava yeah, and uh, specifically the name for a ghost in ancient Pali is Manomayakaya which is a brilliant uh, compound word. Mano means mentation, maya means artifice, kaya means body. So we're literally talking about a mentation, artifice, body, but not a real physical body, but it's still a body nonetheless. The mind, and I mean the spirit, of course, we're referencing the nous, or the spirit, the sanctum, it can make a body <coughs> without a physical body. And you can't deny this because you've been walking around as either yourself or somebody else in your dreams. And so your mind will create, in absence of a physical body, because you're dead asleep, yeah, presumably so, your mind will actually create a body that, you know, you're able to sense and walk around and do things. And there's a way of uh, literally doing that, which, of course, uh, is remote viewing and other things. And these are actually hyper-rational. They're not uh, bizarre. But I'd like to read this from Kumaraswamy about ghosts. Uh, for this is naive indeed. For ghosts, if anything, are phenomena. And, uh, well, of course, by definition, a ghost, since it makes intercession with the physical world, is, of course, uh, phenomena, but the phenomena is caused by noumena, so that's where he gets this wrong. And as such, the proper subject of scientific investigation, only because of their elusiveness. They're not elusive, they're non-physical entities. I mean, it would be like someone trying to track down a dream walker. You know, what, what are you going to do? It's non-physical. Um, because of their elusiveness, ghosts, ghosts uh, pertain to the realm of occultism. Of course, occult technically means to Judeo-Christianity. Anything that's not Judeo-Christianity is a cult, which, of course, means therefore nothing. You know, like hardcore Platonism or Neoplatonism would be considered occult from Judeo-Christian principles. But as precisely in occultism, the supernaturalist is least of all interested. He's uh, quoting now René Guénon, and René Guénon was the complete opposite of an intelligent person. René Guénon was friends with Kumaraswamy, and he probably, uh, you know, gleaned a lot of stuff off of Kumaraswamy, but, man, people say, what about Rene Guénon? It's like, yeah, don't read that. Don't read that stuff. The metaphysician, indeed, is astounded that so many scientists should have become spiritualists. Of course, spiritualism is a movement and other stuff, and, you know, involved a lot of hucksters and hoaxsters, but there were genu genuine spiritualists. Um, but there's a reason why they're looked or frowned upon is because of the stuff that they did and the reputation they had. And it should have attached uh, much importance to the survival of those very personalities which he, the metaphysician in this matter, agreeing with materialists, which you would never agree with a materialist, regards as nothing but becomings or process behaviors and not real beings or in any way, and not as real beings or in any way possible, uh, immortal. And that's completely untrue. Untrue. Did I say untrue? <laughs> completely untrue. I'll edit that out of this video. 
these are real beings. They're just disembodied beings. Now, because of movies and because of myth and folklore, you know, the word ghost has a million negative connotations, and we have like, God, no, you know, Patrick Swayze ghost movie and cartoons of ghosts, and we all have this. So this is completely understandable that the superficial mind of a, of a, a, a spiritually immature person so I don't believe in ghosts. This is what people say. I don't believe in ghosts. And my answer to that is, who cares what you believe in? I'm only interested in facts, logic, and facts, logic, and wisdom. Ghosts are not real in the sense of being objective phenomena, but they are. They are phenomenal as far as their manifestations. But they are certainly so real. These are just disembodied beings. It's easy to completely, uh, you know, wreak havoc upon anybody who, you know, asserts it so strongly. And I've encountered these people a few times. So I don't believe in, well, who cares what you believe in? I don't care what I believe in either. Let's just talk about what is demonstrable. But metaphysics is not demonstrable because it's metaphysics, not physics. What is logical? What can be abduced by facts, logic, and reason to be, of course, true? And, of course, ghosts are real. When I say disembodied beings. I made countless analogies to the near-perfect uh, symbolism of the radio. And that is certainly so the case. You, you could say to these people, um, it's like, you don't believe in ghosts, right? It's like, well, that's fine. Say, so here's a radio, you know, it receives a signal, right? So, well, yeah, that's, I thought I had a radio laying around here. It's like, yeah, that's, that's what it is. It receives a signal. Okay, so what you're saying is that, and of course, life is the consubstantiality between matter and spirit. And you have a living being or person or entity. So what you're saying is that when the radio, the radio gets smashed, then there's no more signal? Well, no, that's ludicrous. What are you trying to say? Well, you're saying the exact same thing. You say, you know, ghosts don't exist, or what we really mean are disembodied beings, which is more logical and accurate. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, well, no, you just contradicted. Your former doesn't follow your latter. You said the signal exists if you smash the radio, right? And the radio's broken. Psst. Of course there's a signal, you know, it's, the radio's gone. I mean, it's undo the well, why would you say something as unintelligent as the fact that uh, ghosts don't exist? You know, we're talking about life as a broadcast. A broadcast is not the signal. A radio tunes the signal. Yeah, and a signal, of course, is modulation. And the reason why a signal is tunable is because it is modulated. These people, they don't think at all about anything unless it's about money or what they're going to eat tonight or tomorrow or countless other base materialistic uh, phenomena you know, that have to do with indulging their life. You know, what car are they going to buy next? What's their latest material acquisition? Here's something I listened to, I'll never forget it, and I forgot who said it, but if I'm lying, I'm dying. And it was a prediction made by this very preeminent scientist, which means nothing, of course. And he said, and it was a reference to like a ghost photograph, I think, right? Sometime in the 80s. And he said, oh, as we progress technologically, he said, all of this uh, nonsense about ghosts will vanish as we become more technologically advanced. And he said something else to the effect that, you know, it's just going to vanish like a fart in the wind. You know, all of this stuff is just like gross superstitions, bleeping ghosts. Like, they'll, they'll actually uh, uh, try to bring it down a notch. So that's just like believing in Bigfoot and unicorns and leprechauns. And, of course, it was ridiculous trying to normalize something as being crazy. And what happened since that statement was made in the early to mid-80s when I heard it from that preeminent scientist? Well, what's happened is the exact opposite has happened. Okay, You need to make a mental note of this. Yeah, The exact opposite has happened. Why? Because people are more intellectually de-evolved. Well, they kind of are, but not on that front. The reasons why it has happened is for the same reason that ignorant so-called genius scientists said it would end. You know, it's just like die off. As technology advances, we'll see that all this is just fairy tales and nonsense. It, 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 the exact opposite happened because technology has gotten super cheap and super obtainable. Transspectral cameras, extremely accurate and super sensitive voice recording phenomena, transspectral recording phenomena, Near infrared, ultraviolet, unbelievable. Because human beings are only able to see the very, very smallest fraction of the electromagnetic spectrum. 
very, very, very thin slice. And yet, technology now is just dirt, dirt cheap. Any kid with 20 bucks in his pocket could buy an infrared recording device. And so what has happened is there's been a massive expanse that is off the Richter scale of people recording stuff. Yeah, And I know there's still hoaxers, as there's always been hoaxers. This, of course, is uh, uh, undeniable and certainly so true. But the exact opposite happened because of that cheap technology that that guy predicted, that famous, famous science. Here is Socrates in the Phaedo 81D. These souls, meaning disembodied beings, wander about until at last, through craving for the corporeal, which has unceasingly pursued them, they are imprisoned once more in a body. Let's just say, we, it doesn't matter what people say. I could care less what people say. Disembodied beings or ghosts. By the way, I wrote a free article on the nature of ghosts. You could download it. It's on my Google Drive. I've posted that uh, link up. Um, just say disembodied beings. It's no different than saying a signal. A signal is modulated and is therefore tunable. This is the reason why people are embodied or prone to embodiment is due to primordial agnosis, which is modulation. Modulation, of course, has a spatio-temporal footprint. No signal that is lacking in modulation can be tuned, and therefore it can never, ever, ever be manifest. It is, by definition, pure energy sitting at the plane of inertia, sitting at the center of all things. Undeniable. This dream state eye, by the way, is called uh, Dibakaku. It literally means heavenly eye. But uh, people say, well, how do these people without a physical body experience anything? I said, well, that's a good question. You know, how is it that you experience and taste and do things in a dream state which seem perfectly real? Undeniably, you know, that's the ancient Pali word for that is Dibakaku. Diba, heavenly or transcendent. Kaku means eye or vision, so transcendent or a metaphysical vision, different than like a dream vision, of course. It's trans-temporal awareness, what it is specifically. It is not empirical awareness, but a metaphysical awareness. Except in this case, unlike a dream where you're doing all sorts of crazy stuff in places that don't exist, we're talking about genuine awareness of things as they genuinely are, even though, of course, you're disconnected and you're not temporalized in the case of these disembodied beings. Uh, also, two people ascribe phenomena to these uh, disembodied beings that are actually incorrect, and I could make a huge article, and I think maybe I should, because I'm working on an article on, uh, on uh, retroduction. But these living beings, uh, you know, who record, you know, through digital thermometers, uh, these cold spots, uh, both stationary and moving, are encountering a counterspatial anode. I don't know if you know this or not, but you could Google this, type in, when the cathode heats up, the anode chills. Yeah, just type in cold ath, cold cathode. So what they're experiencing is a counterspatial anode of a disembodied being who exists in this dielectric counterspatial realm. You know, this uh, concentric uh, field of these beings, these disembodied beings, are of course counter torsional. It's uh, basically an anode. It's a counterspatial anode. And it's the reason why it, people feel these, and it is demonstrable. I've experienced it before. People say, have you ever seen ghosts? The answer is yes. And I've experienced these incredible cold spots. Like, like oh, I entered a room and it's colder here. It's like, no, it went from 70 degrees to like 20 degrees. And just in this little area that you could feel here. So it's actually extreme. These uh, beings are, of course, like I said, counterspatial torture. Counterspatial torsional, ether induction. Um, literally, the spirit uh, and by the spirit itself, a subjective ether anode. These beings are not drawing, and this is what all these other people say, they're not pulling or drawing energy from the environment. So they'll say, oh, they're, they're taking energy from the battery, the battery drained, or you know, they're taking energy from the environment. No, these beings are fed by the energy itself. They're not needing to feed on energy. What they're causing is a counterspatial anode. Metaphysics, by the way, is hyperlogical and hyperrational. There's nothing uh, strange or you know weird about it, you know, unless one superficially examines it, or you know goes to, like the New Age section of a bookstore and looks at all that, you know, crystal rubbing, <laughs> uh, you know, crystal rubbing white lighter stuff. You know what I'm talking about, which I have no connection to at all. Please don't ever, ever, ever associate me with that stuff. 
So they're not actually pulling energy once again from the environment or from warm living beings. This, of course, is radically absurd and utterly illogical. This uh, posterior attribute of these disembodied beings is illogical and natural. Anode cooling phenomena. By the way, type in anode cooling. You'll find all sorts of information. Socrates Phaedo 83D, because every uh, pleasure or pain has with it a sort of rivet by which it fastens the soul to the body and pins it down and makes it corporeal. Modulation is the cause, the uncaused cause, i.e. avidya, of embodiment. Modulation of any signal is no different than talking about illumination relative to light. Light and illumination are not two things, they're one thing. One's the extrinsic attribute of the other. Modulation is the uncaused cause for embodiment itself. It is no different than the radio signal being able to be tuned. And when it is tuned, it is consubstantial and therefore manifest. As such manifest, then of course we have empirical life. And by the way, the antenna for that in their radio analogy is water, in the case of a living being. Water. Water is the dipole antenna for where, where, bitch, where by which, through which, and from which uh, life is able to uh, manifest. Sorry about that little uh, brain fart there five seconds ago, but I did not literally go to bed last night until 7 a.m. <laughs> I was really up really, really late. But this is a, a viewer requested video. People are always asking about ghosts. Have you ever seen a ghost? I guess I have. You know, you experience them too. And of course, they're not physical beings. They can't manifest uh, physically. It is literally like a dream leaking its way into the real world. But real in what sense? In these disembodied beings, as the Pali word goes, monomayakaya, mentation made artifice, are able to bleed through and rarely be visible to human beings. Usually they're seen in the infrared spectrum, sometimes in UV. Um, they manifest through different electrical phenomena. They'll actually generate uh, an ozone-like field. They'll generate cold spots because they're a counterspatial anode. Disembodied being is not occult. It's not like New Age. It's, it's, it's none of that stuff that Judeo-Christianity ascribes to it. You know, uh, the great minds of Socrates, Plato, Pythagoras, Plotinus, on and on and on. They realize that everything must be logical and necessitatively understandable through an acute mind. And, you know, these disembodied beings are no different. No different at all. I mean, you smash the radio, the signal is still present, right? But where is it, you know? You smash your radio and all of a sudden you're not getting your fancy grooves anymore, right? Your rock and roll. I mean, where is the rock and roll signal? It is nowhere and everywhere. It is tuned and made manifest. It is temporalized when it is tuned. It is then, of course, temporalized. The radio analogy is not perfect, but it is nearly perfect. Okay. Modulation is the reason for manifestation. Modulation is not original sin or first cause because there isn't one in uh, Platinian, Pythagorean, monistic metaphysics, either Greek or Indian. So, I hope I kind of made this simple. I mean, it's kind of an obscure topic. Get it obscure, obscura. But it is very simple. And it is certainly has nothing to do with New Age movement or, you know, the stuff you see in the spiritual section of the bookstore, you know, sp spiritual, you know, the, you know, the, the, the crystal rubber. I call it the crystal rubber section of the bookstore. <laughs> Reason why I have this on my desk is really cool. There's a little light that's underneath it and you turn it on and it turns different colors. It's not because I ascribe anything to this, by the way. It feels like, why well, yeah, is that neat crystal selenite you got sitting on your desk there? Not for any reason other than it's cool when you turn the light on underneath it. I hope I made this simple. Yeah, this is a viewer requested video, and have a lovely weekend. Feel so sorry for that poor darking, barking dog that's sitting out there in the rain, but what am I going to do?